The word you hear, the word of God you hear is what determines the faith you walk in. I repeat it. The word of God you hear is what determines the faith you walk in. And so preaching is not an item on church calendar or church event. Preaching is the means to nourish the human spirit. Preaching is the means to bring in faith to the hearers. Preaching is the means to let the, God, the power of God invade people's life. Preaching is the means to saturate an environment, an atmosphere, a, a situation with God's word and the power of his word. He said God manifested his word through preaching. So preaching is the means to see God at work, to allow, permit God to work in a a life or in a situation. So preaching is not just an item. That is why every genuine and decent godly preaching must be based heavily, strongly on the word of God. On the word of God, because no man has anything to say which can help man apart from the word of God. So it must be hinged on the word of God. Preaching of the word of God is what brings deliverance and relief. Let us hold fast our profession. It's a profession of faith. Hold fast. You know, you see the hold fast has appeared here again. Hold tight. Hold fast. Why? Because you, you can tell we have a high priest there. And so you have to hold fast. Don't compromise on your belief in Christ. Don't let the situation change your position in God. Do this church thing. Do it well. Bro, sis, do it well. Do it well. Do this church thing well, with sincerity, with fidelity, with humility, and with purity. Do it well, holding fast the profession of your faith. Our high priest works with the profession of our faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for today. We thank God for his goodness, his mercies. I'm very grateful to God for giving us life and giving me the opportunity to share his word, wholesome words, I pray, with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for coming on this um, session and allowing me to share God's word with you. It's such a privilege and I honor God for your life. Those joining us for this for the first time, welcome. But please try make sure you subscribe to our channel. All right, subscribe to it. It, it will help spread the word and like this particular message if it's a blessing to you. All right, just make sure you like it. Show that it's encouraging to let, to let us know that you like it because it's, a, it's been a blessing to you and then let your comments also follow. All these are appreciated and God bless you. Father, we thank you for the privilege to hear your word. We pray, let your word come like hammer to shatter and break the rocks. 
every stony and rocky situation be broken by your word. Let your word come to heal the sick. Let your word come as medicine to heal. Let your word come as bread to strengthen and to feed. Let your word, O oh God, come as water to cleanse. Let your word come as light and lamp to guide and shine on the path. Let your word, O oh God, let your word come, uh, Lord, like milk to to nourish. Let your word come as meat to feed and to strengthen. O oh Lord, glorify the name of Jesus. Let your word come as truth to point and to illuminate. Lord, let your name be glorified. Thank you for giving us the privilege to hear a word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. What a glorious Sunday morning and a glorious day. In him we live and move and have our being. Last Thursday I said that a lot of things are happening around us. And I said a lot can happen in a day. And certainly a lot can happen in a week. And a lot more can happen in a month. And much more can happen in a year. And a lot more can happen in a person's lifetime. But all these things, Bible says that known unto God are all his works. So God works in a lifetime. And because he's working in your lifetime, he is going to use your, your years to work in your life, lifetime. And because he's working in the year, he's going to use the months of the year. Every month of the year is one of the months God is using to do his work in your life and glorify his name in our lives. And then every week of the month, He's working and every day of the week he's doing something and guess what and every hour of the day God is up to something building and guess what certainly this moment is the, the best and the finest moment for what God intends to do in your life in the future he's starting it now I see your testimony starting now I see your turn around starting from now in the name of Jesus Bible says now faith is the substance Hebrews chapter 11 this one we thank god for today and i'm very i'm particularly very excited about god's word and as i'm teaching on faith you know um i mean i'm talking about action faith living faith faith that works faith that brings results faith is a game changer faith is a game changer it changes everything it it, it turns situations around faith your faith will definitely speak for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm so happy to talk about faith. Faith that will work. Faith that must work. The working faith. Hallelujah. In, as I said, faith is a game changer. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk 2 4. In um, Romans chapter 1 verse 17, the just shall live by faith. Roma, uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse 11, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38, the just shall live by faith. Four times in the scriptures, the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith. In other words, the just dies without faith. The just is going down without faith. The just cannot rise without faith. It takes faith to see God at work. And I remember Bishop Oyedepo puts it this way. He says that uh, all, uh, if what it takes is God, then all it takes is faith. If what it takes is God, all it takes is faith. It's not a matter of time. It's God. It's just a matter of God and it's a matter of faith. So what uh, uh, your faith will determine your destiny. In fact, Jesus puts it this way in Matthew chapter 9 verse um, Matthew chapter 9 verse 29, he said, Be it unto you according to, not my faith, but your faith. Your faith is what sets, sets the pace for your faith. It sets the pace for the outcome of your life, your marriage. Because the just shall live by faith, which means the just shall raise his child by faith. The just shall raise her child by faith. The just shall succeed in business by faith. The just shall do well in life by faith. The just shall be healed by faith. The just shall come out of debt by faith. The just shall pay his bills by faith. The just shall raise his family by faith. The just shall do well in ministry by faith. The just shall do God's work by faith. The just shall succeed. The just shall progress by faith. We walk by faith. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you have faith in God, faith is a game changer. The, 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 Jesus said to them when they asked Jesus, how come the fig tree has withered? He said, have faith in God. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Because why? Game. Faith is a game changer. Romans chapter 4. You know, Christianity is based on, uh, before I read Romans chapter 5, I think I'll go to John there. Christianity is a function of faith. Your belief. Your belief. They were killed for their beliefs. Right? They were martyred, murdered for their beliefs, not their behavior. The strength of your Christianity is belief-centered. <laughs> I will say it again. The strength of anybody's Christianity is belief-centered, is faith-centered. If your belief or if the strength of your Christianity is behavior-centered, you are missing something. You are missing it. You are missing it. You are missing it. Are you trying to say behavior doesn't matter? The behavior that is born by faith or born out of belief is what matters to God. All right. So any behavior that is not a baby, of belief or a function of belief doesn't secure heaven's attention. So, in, because in Christianity is it rises and falls. It hang the it said the door of um, salvation, justification, healing. The door, the door, the door of everything in Christianity is runs on the hinge of faith. The hinge of faith. Without faith, Hebrews chapter eleven verse six says, "Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For whoever comes to God must believe. Your believing is a necessary." requirement is an unconditional requirement in attempting to pray, attempting to come to God, attempting to receive anything from God. Your believing is a cardinal, un unnegotiable requirement. He said, for he whoever comes to God must believe. For God so the most famous scripture uh, uh, quotation in the Bible, for John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes. When it comes to what God can do, all the requirements, all that is required is faith, believing. Whosoever believes. It doesn't say whosoever behaves. Whosoever believes. Whosoever believes, and then when you believe, that's the message I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach today. When you believe, your belief will produce results. So this is how the reformers put it. We are saved by faith alone, not faith and works, not faith and what you do. That's not what saves you. It's faith alone. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. It's not of works. All right, 8 and 9, Ephesians 2. So we are saved by grace through faith alone. Faith alone. So the reformers call sola fide, only faith. Sola fide. It takes only faith, not faith plus works. It, we are saved by sola fide, faith alone, but not faith that is alone. We are saved by faith alone, but not faith that is alone. Not hairless faith. <laughs> not uh, actionless faith. Not dead faith. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Fide viva. Living faith. Action faith. Faith that has works. I'm talking about the works of faith. How to make your faith work. You, it must, faith that works must have works. The faith that works must have works. But the point I'm making is that we are saved by faith. Everything rises in godliness and Christianity. Everything rises and falls on faith. So Paul said in Titus chapter 1, he said, Paul, a born servant of Jesus Christ or a servant of Jesus Christ and an apostle of God, 
uh, apostle, a servant of God, apostle of Jesus Christ, f- according to the elect, the faith of God's elect. All right, you see, according to the faith of God's elect. In Romans chapter 1, I think um, verse 5 or somewhere there, it says that we have received apostleship for the obedience of of faith, something like that. I think I'm already in Romans chapter 1. Let me just read it. Having received apostleship for the um, obedience. Yeah, verse 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith amongst all nations for his name. Our apostleship is for obedience of faith. Obedience. So the behavior, actions that are birthed by faith. So the apostles assignment is to teach the word so that we to build it says that um I forgot in that text it talks about we, we are helpers of your faith. So we are helpers of your faith or builders of your faith. By faith we stand. We are helpers of your faith. So he said the apostle is sent to help your faith so that your faith will produce works of obedience. Because faith without works is dead. I'm going to go into that. So, as I said earlier on, you understand that it says the just shall live by faith. In Christianity, everything is a function of faith. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I like this one. Oh, it is. Anything that works with God, anything that works in Christianity, anything that works spiritually, all right, on the part of God, is, a, is faith, faith, faith based, belief determined. <laughs> anything that works with God is believe, belief determined is belief determined is your faith and your belief that determines what God is allowed, what God is permitted and what God is authorized to do in your life, hallelujah and so I want us to understand, now even when you read the Bible um, you come across the Christianity is so much based on faith that it is actually called the faith. Titus, I'm sorry, Jude chapter 1, oh, verse 3. Jude verse 3. It says that I, I wanted to write to you, but I felt necessary to write to you to contend for the faith that was once delivered. The Christian is the, the faith there means Christianity. Christianity is so much based on belief that it is called the faith. Christianity is called the faith. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. And many priests became obedient to the faith. Became obedient to the faith. So Christianity is called the faith. First uh, Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. He said they have erred from the faith. Erred from the faith. Because erred, that talk, that talk about erred from Christianity. So Christianity is called the faith. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says that in the last times, um, perilous times, some people will teach, uh, people will depart from the faith. They will depart the faith. It's talking about departing from Christianity. Bible calls Christianity the faith. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, it's called the faith. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, it says that if anyone who doesn't take care of his own is worse than an infidel. And has denied the faith. Have denied Christianity. So Christianity is so much based on belief. So much based on faith. It is called the faith. So anytime you hear the word the faith. is talking about that's the objective faith. Christianity. As Christianity and its doctrine. They continue in the apostles doctrine. So it's the faith. And then when you talk about. Then we have faith as action. So we have the faith. We stand for Christianity. So he said, contending for the faith. That means contending for Christianity. How do you contend? Hmm, this is an interesting point I'm about to make. How do you contend for Christianity? It's not necessarily um, through demonstration, right? It's not uh, joining the picket line necessarily. Is that wrong? I'm not saying that is wrong. But that's not how to. To contend for the faith, we have to hold forth the word of truth. So anything that is contrary to what God's word is saying, you have to take it serious because it's an attack on the faith. It's an attack. You can't attack the Christianity until you attack what we believe. You can't attack Christianity until you attack the word of God. 
When someone tells you the word is, is, is not necessary, people, this Bible, some people wrote it. That's, that's the, the, the person is sounding very clearly, succinctly like the devil. That's how the devil talks. All right. The, I'm, I'm not saying the person is the devil. No, the person might have good intentions, might be a genuine person, but now he's echoing the voice of the devil. That's the devil's language. That the Bible, how can you believe in the Bible? The Bible is a white man's religion. Some people use the Bible to subjugate. I told you the other time, people use the Bible to achieve their own aim in a negative way. Twisted, that's why we need the sound doctrine. We need the word of truth. So when someone twists, we can catch the person. Christianity is weakened by the twisting of the scriptures. So you either twist the scriptures or disbelieve the scriptures, you have weakened Christianity. There can never be Christianity without the Bible. So those people who think, oh, the Bible is just a book. I, I read the stories. I like the stories. Wonderful moral teachings. Hey, hey, drop it, drop it. It's not about the stories. It's about the nourishment. It's about the, the faith. The faith is built. Let me show you something. In, uh, in John chapter 21 verse 25. John 20, that's the last book, uh, verse in John. It says that, um, and there are also many other, th other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that were, uh, that should be written. Amen. It's finished the book of John. He said, Jesus did so many things that even if they are written. So listen, the Bible is not a history book. To record events that has happened in the past. No, 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 no. It's not a history book. It's the re record of the redemption plan of God. It is only content. Anything that is not necessary for redemption. It's not necessary for God's economy. It's not necessary for the producing of the church. And preparing us as a bride. It will be found in the scriptures. That means that everything written in the scriptures is necessary for our redemption. Everything written in scriptures. I'm talking about the Bible. It's necessary for our redemption. Not a word is unimportant. I think Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, it says that heaven and earth shall pass away, not even a dot, a, a dot or a tittle. So that, you know, it's like the dot on the eye. Okay, so let's say it, I-T, it, I-T, it. The eye, dot on the eye. Bible says that even that one in the Bible matters. It won't pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not a jot or a tittle shall pass from the word. So that means that every word, every letter in the Bible is important, is sensitive for redemption. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So when they say, tell you the Bible is just a book, uh, it's, it's just a book written by man, and somebody says, I've read the Bible and I, I, I don't believe everything, you say, huh? You have an exaggerated opinion of yourself. You mean you have read the whole Bible and understand it so well now? He says, <laughs> you, are, you, are not, you, are, you are not being smart, man. This Bible that has produced major, major civilizations, backed civilization, you, I don't know your level of, um, your status in life though, but you said, I have read the Bible and I, 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 I don't believe it. Because it's not correct. <laughs> you think it's not correct. Billions and millions and billions of people have given their lives for this. <laughs> Stop that. You have an exaggerated opinion of yourself to just dismiss the Bible. You have to take your time. Do a thorough research, personal research. Read it, read it. Don't let someone program them. Read it and read it. You find out that this, 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 the Bible is rather reading you. You, are, you can't read the Bible. The Bible will be, will be reading you. It has feet, it will run after you. It has hands, it will lay hold on you. It has mouth, it will speak to you. It will run after you, it will lay hold on you, it will speak to you. It has, it has eyes, it will be watching you. It thinks that no one is seeing, it will be talking to you about it because it sees you. Someone put it this way. He said, when I read the Bible, I found out that I'm not actually, the Bible is reading me. I'm not reading the Bible. So, back to the point, he says that, so... Everything, there's so much that has been written that was not written because it's not necessary for redemption. But it says that, watch this. So uh, if they're written books, the, the world will not even be able to contain the books that will be written. That's a very interesting one. Chapter 20, verse 30. John 20, 30 says that, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Watch this. So why this one written? But verse 31. But these are written that ye might believe 
that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <laughs> and that believing your story will change. <laughs> believing might have life through it. Believing is the key. The Bible is for believing. The Bible, that's why it ends. The last word in the Bible is Amen. Amen is means I believe in him. I hear all the promises of God. Second Corinthians chapter chapter 1, verse 20. All the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen to the glory of the Father. So the point here is that the word of God is for believing, is to produce believing or is to produce belief. So that tells you how central, how cardinal, how key your belief or your faith is. Faith or belief is in the heart. Belief in Romans chapter, um, in Romans chapter 10. Verse 9, it says that with the heart, for with the heart man believes, and with the, uh, Romans chapter 10, hallelujah, hallelujah, verse, 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 all right, I want to read the verse 10 instead, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The heart believes. So you can believe in your heart. Believing has to do with your heart. But for it to be a complete faith, there must be corresponding action. So faith and belief are kind of the same, but faith is the full cycle of belief. So you have to believe to be saved. But if you believe, there will be corresponding works. That, so it's your works. You can believe in your heart. No one sees them for in it, watch it, verse 10. For with the heart man believes. I can't tell what is in your heart. That's why walk with God is in your heart. With the heart man believes, but guess what? But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But in fact, he's talking about we are saved by faith. Okay. Um verse 8, it says that um verse um verse 8 said, but what says it? The word is in your mouth, the, is, is, and is in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So the word of faith that is, is in your mouth and in your heart. So the thing starts with your heart, but it ends up with your mouth. Then it becomes a complete cycle of faith. So when people believe, you can't see belief, but you can see faith. So in other words, faith is belief in action. You can't have faith without believing. It's like you have to believe. So faith, believing is always a function of the heart. So faith is born from the heart. I see your faith growing. That is why it takes the word because the only organ in the human body, or the uh, the only yeah the only organ in the organ in the human body that receives the word of God, is the heart. And when I say heart, I don't mean the heart that is pumping natural blood. Okay, yeah, that's an organ, but I mean, it's the spirit, the, 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 the heart of a man, is, which is in your spirit. Your heart, or which is part of your spirit, or your spirit is part of your heart. The, that heart, that's where the word of God is said, you, you, Thy word have I hid in my heart, Psalm 119 verse 11, in my heart. The word is meant for the heart, not for the head, for mental exercise. It's heart exercise, then it enters your head and then you begin to understand. So you can't understand properly the way it should be without your heart first receiving Christ. So the word of God, he said this, the word, the word of God is actually written or given so we can believe because you can't walk with God without believing. And when I was preparing, I just wrote down some acronyms for believing. So believing us is B-E-L-I-E-V-E. -E -E. Okay. And I said the B, God, believing is a game changer. If you believe, it changes your story. Once you believe, your story changes. Hallelujah. And I see somebody's story changing right now. Once you believe, your story cha changes. So belief is a game changer. And from uh, look at um, John chapter, uh, look, uh, John chapter 6. John chapter 6, quickly, I want to show you something. So I'm just trying to define belief, give you belief, the acronym of belief, which I've written, written down. So B, the B stands for what? What does the B stands for? The B stands for build. Without 
faith or without believing, you cannot build for God. And how does it mean to build for God? Work with God. You work. God is always building. God is a builder. All right. God the builder. And he has called us to build with us. He has he is building co laborers with us according to First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. So watch this. Um John chapter chapter 6. Did I say chapter 2? Sorry, please. It's John chapter 6, verse 29. John chapter 6, verse 29. It says that Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, oh, oh, that ye believe in him whom he has sent. What's the work of God? Don't say, I want to do this. Start with the faith. Believe. Believe in him. Believe in Jesus. You can't work for God if you don't believe in Jesus. You are working for yourself or you are working for something else. But he said, the work of God is to believe. So number one, the B in the belief, I, I said it stands for build. Okay, you can't build without belief. It's a game changer. Once you believe, you can build. Number two, it's esteem. So God, will, it, it brings, an, it esteems you or elevates you. E is for elevation or esteem, to be esteemed, to be elevated. The opposite of being elevated is to be put to shame. And so in Romans chapter 10, verse 11, it says that for whoever shall call on, it says that um, whoever believes shall not be put to shame. Romans 10, 11 says, for the scripture said, whosoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. You shall be esteemed. You won't be put to shame if you believe God. If you believe on him, you shall not be put to shame. So if you believe on him, you shall be elevated. If you believe on him, you shall be esteemed. How can someone be esteemed and shamed at the same time? No. So believing puts you on the road for elevation. So number one is, is built. You believe to build. Number two, you believe to be elevated or to be esteemed. Number three, you believe to, to, to see impossibilities turn around. Jesus said that in, in Mark, Jesus said the, in the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9, 23 says that for with, it says that all things are possible. The thing is coming. All things are possible to him who believes. What is it that is facing you, my brother? What is it that is you are beset with? Can you, can you believe? Get the word of God. Load yourself with the word of God. You are sick in hospital. Your leg is lifted. And you are watching East Ended and watching movies. Uh, I don't even know the, the, the name of some of the actors. What the actors? Yeah, 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 we are watching Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not. A, oh, no, no, it's not a sin. Sometimes you need encouragement to. Yeah, keep encouraging yourself. You need God's word to come in. You need preaching and you need reading. Read and hear preaching. Read and let the word of God come in because it takes the word of God for you, your faith to come alive. And when you believe, Bible says that all things are possible to him who believes. So the, 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 the eye is impossibilities are taken care of. So build, believe, esteem, impossibilities become possible hallelujah and then then the i i left the i i'm sorry i left the l please forgive me i'm getting the l is salvation the l you'll be saved in acts chapter 16 verse 31 it says that believe in the lord jesus christ and you shall be saved in mark 16 69 i want to remember mark 16 16 it says that those who believe shall be saved whoever believes will be saved and baptized will be saved, okay? So, believe will save you. What does that mean? The L is save salvation there, or to be saved is to be liberated. You are set free, you are liberated. So, I put the L there, liberation. So, B is build. E, esteem or elevate. Uh, L, liberated. I, impossibilities, 10 possible. Um, and then E, the next E is empowerment Romans chapter 1 verse 16 for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation let me read it oh so this seems like I'm a bit more in Romans. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 for I am not ashamed for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ why for it is the power of God unto salvation is that the end that's, that's not the end unto everyone who believes is the power. It remains powerless until you believe. 
You are not empowered until you are walking in belief. So it is the power of God to him who believes. Once you believe, the power comes towards you. Look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 verse. Oh, you will like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 says that. And what is the exceeding power, uh, sorry, exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe? The power of God is towards us, to us. Well, that's King James. All right, to us, towards us who believe. I think New King James will say towards us. Do you mind? Let me just read from New King James. Power comes towards you when once you believe. Power is on its way into your life. Well, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? You see that? So the power of God is towards us. It, it's as soon as you be, the power is there. The power is there, but as soon as you believe, the power begins to come towards you. I see power happening, the coming towards you. I'm talking about the exceeding greatness of his power. It exceeds any kind of limitation. You can't limit the power because it's an exceeding, the power is ex exceeds in greatness. Okay, it exceeds in greatness. So he said, to the ex and the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe not towards everybody people are saying also oh, but why is where is god if god is there why am i going through this why is it hey don't ask that question if you have not exercised your faith if you have not believed first so when you believe as soon as you believe power begins to come so believing entitles you to for empowerment i see somebody receiving empowerment as the word is coming you're connecting your heart i see somebody receiving empowerment receive it in the name of jesus receive empowerment in the name of jesus receive empowerment in the name of jesus so believe the b is building you need, um, you need to believe to be able to build. You need to believe E to be able to be elevated. You need to believe to be to be liberated. You need to believe to see impossibilities turn around. You need to believe to, to be empowered. And then the next one, I like this scripture so much. I will read it. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, please, please allow me. I'll read this thing. It's so nice. Acts chapter 24. I'll read it before I tell you what it is. Acts 24, verse 4. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 24, verse 4. It says that, verse, verse 14, I'm sorry. It says that, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, I worship I, I worship I the God of my fathers. They are calling this thing, what, the way we are worshiping God, that is heretic, is heresy. It's nonsense. After the way which they call heresy, I worship God. Okay. I worship, uh, worship uh, so worship I, the God of our fathers, believing all things. How can you worship without believing? <laughs> your worship is compromised when you begin, to, your belief begins to go down. When people backslide, it's first a, a faith. Backsliding is a faith, function of faith. So he says that I worship God, believing all things spoken by the prophets, believing all things. So now what's the, the V? V is venerate to worship. You can't venerate God. You can't worship God without believing. So V is venerate. So B is build. E is elevate. L is liberate. I is impossibilities turning, being turned around. E is empowerment. V is venerate. And then the last E is, let me tell you what it is, is encouragement. You need courage. Encouragement to be able not to, in the face of fear. So in, in Luke chapter 8, verse 50, Jesus said, um, fear not, only believe. And in Mark chapter Mark chapter 5, verse 36. When Jairus was told the story, Jesus heard it. He turned to Jairus and he said, Fear not, only believe. Believing is what you need to be able to paralyze that fear. It's like an encouragement. In the face of discouragement, in the face of fear, you receive encouragement to keep going. Believing, believing will, uh, will, will, will paralyze that fear. So believing is encouragement to paralyze. So the last E, 
is encouragement. Let me summarize it again. So B is to build. You can't build without believing. You can't be elevated by God without believing. You can't be, uh, you can't be liberated by God, saved without believing. You cannot see impossibilities turn around without believing. You believe to be empowered. You believe in order to venerate God and worship God. You believe in order to be encouraged and keep going and keep going not to fear. Fear not, only believe. Fear not, only believe. In fact, in Mark, in Luke, sorry, uh, in, in Mark chapter four, yeah, chapter four, verse 40, when they saw the storm and they were scared, Jesus said, why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? Why, why is your faith? Why are you so fearful? I think I'm talking to somebody. Why are you so much afraid that something will happen to you? Nothing will happen to you. What will happen to you? I prophesy that nothing negative will happen to your marriage. Nothing will happen to your child. Nothing will happen to your, uh, your father. Nothing will happen to your mother. Nothing will happen to that husband or that wife. Nothing will happen to your job. Nothing will happen to your house. Nothing will happen to your situation. Uh, not, not, Satan will not reign. Satan will not win. Don't be afraid. He's just using fear to intimidate you. But I, I came to tell somebody, you are not going to go down. The corona is still around, but it can't come near you. Believe God, it won't come near you. Believe God. Believing will never make you a victim. He says that those who believe shall not be put to shame. You can't believe be, uh, in the, uh, the end of being put to shame or disgrace. No, you can't be disgraced in belief. <laughs> no. No. Who go wash here? Nobody goes down believing and believing rights for that matter. No one goes down. No one goes down believing. Because it because says that for you cannot, he said, he who believes, Romans 10, 11, he who believes will not be put to shame. He who believes will not be put to shame. So even if you look, it looks like you are down, you are not down because you are, your believing doesn't keep you down. Jesus asked Peter, why did you doubt? Once he started, took his eyes and focused his attention on the storm, he began to sink. But as, once when his focus was on the word of God, he was walking on the water. You can't sink holding on to God's word. You can't sink. You can't, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's, that's the belief thing. The word is coming so you can have something to hold on to in order not to sink. I see you soaring. I see you floating above the things that is sinking others. Others are sinking by it. You will not sink. Why? Because you are a believer. The believers, the Christians in the Bible are more referred to as believers. Why? Because they believe God's word. They believe in Christ. I believe that Apostles Christians, it starts with I believe. You can't be a Christian without belief. Because believing is a game changer. It moves you from one level to the other. John 3, 15, John 3, 16, John 3, 18, John 3, 20. It all talks about believing. Once you believe, your story changes. Once you believe, you are moving from one level to the other. Jesus kept talking, believe, believe, believe. And I see your story changing. And when I read the Bible, I then came across, Pastor, okay, I want to believe. I believe in my heart. Oh, 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 let me tell you why. Your faith is not working. If your faith is not working, there's a reason why. Because I'm talking about the faith that works. It must work. So if you have faith, it must work. Faith works. A pastor, my own is not working. I'll show you why it's not working. The faith that does not work. I'm talking about the faith that works making your faith work how to make your faith work because faith works <laughs> how to make your faith work because faith works if faith works then your faith must work and if your faith must work you must know how to work it you must know what to do to make it work how to work your faith to work that's what i'm talking about working your faith to work faith must work for you it must deliver for you hallelujah Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. I see somebody's story changing because this message has come at the right time in this year to change your story. Hallelujah. This message is coming at the right time. You are not listening to this message by, by accident. I know God has sent this message particularly to somebody. I might not be speaking to everybody, but there's somebody in particular. You know what God is talking to you because you have so many questions, but the, what is lacking? He said, your faith is drowning. 
come alive in faith. Build your faith. You have why is it not working? I'm showing you why. Why it work? Why your faith will work? This is why your faith will work. James chapter 2, verse 17, verse 19, verse 20. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Huh. Let me read from this. Uh, um, all right, let me read this, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being alone. Oh, so faith is not supposed to be alone. <laughs> I believe, I believe. No, that's not enough. <laughs> faith that is alone is dead faith. It can produce. If you put a dead seed in the ground, forget it. You're not going to get any plant germinating because it's a dead seed. It's a dead seed. Faith that is alone is dead. And faith that is dead cannot produce. It cannot bring any. Um, so watch this. He said, but, <laughs> but even so, if, uh, 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 sorry, even so, if it has no way, if, sorry, even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being alone. The problem is it is alone because it's supposed to work with works. He said, if he has no work, he's alone. Look at verse 20. Thou believe that there is one God. That's good. That's good. That's good. Thou do as well. He said, that's a good belief. The devil also believes, and as for him, he even shakes. So saying, I believe there's God. I believe Jesus is good. I believe the Bible is the word of God is good, but that is not enough. That is not good enough to produce the godly results that faith can produce. So just saying that I believe is not enough. So what should you do? Watch this. Verse, um, verse 20, right? Verse 20 says that, but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is death, like I said earlier on. Faith without works is death. And then look at the verse 22. See thou, seeth, uh, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works faith was made perfect. When he says faith, faith was made perfect, it's like the, the cycle was complete. All the requirements were ticked. The requirement to make faith works was thick to make faith so now this is what i'm talking about it's called the action faith so faith that has not got action is a dead faith it's not a living faith fide viva that's faith that has life living faith fide viva fide viva that's the latin fide viva fide viva is the faith that is alive and faith that has not got works is a dead faith okay it's a dead faith it's the faith that has not got action faith only works with actions if you don't back your belief with actions it's not faith because it's a dead faith is the dead faith watch this faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Faith works by speaking the word of God. Faith lives by acting. Faith comes by hearing. Faith lives. Uh, faith works by speaking. Faith lives by acting. Actions. So, action faith. What makes your faith work is your actions born by the faith. That makes so when I was studying the scriptures in the time of Jesus, he did he did quite a few miracles, but I realized that most of the miracles he did were the function of the faith of the people. So there are times he could tell somebody, Your faith has made you whole. Can you imagine? In Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter 8, from verse 7, a man came to him and he says that can you uh, my my child or my servant lies sick? Can you heal come and heal him? And I know what Jesus said. Let me take this Bible. Open it here already. He said, Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Um, yeah, verse 6. Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The man said, no, 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 no. I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. I'm a, but I'm a man under authority. I say to this, go and they go and they say this. So I understand authority. So you don't need to be there in person. A word will be enough. 
<laughs> a word. The word of your man of God, working with God, working with God is enough. Changes the story. I speak a word into your life that there's, your story is changing, your address is changing, your circumstance is changing, your situation is changing. By the power of God, as you believe, the power is coming to you. As you believe, the power is coming into your family. As you believe, the, the power is being made real for you. In the name of Jesus, I curse that sickness that has ravaged your body, that has attacked your body. I curse that sickness to live now. I command that sickness to live now. I, I command it to be paralyzed in your body and flushed out in the name of Jesus. I speak the word of healing. I speak the word of liberty. I speak the word of empowerment. I speak the word of, 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 of liberation into your life. In the name of Jesus, anything that has held you captivity, it can be an addiction. It can be, it can be, it can be a situation. Whatever is holding you captive, I, I break its power by the word of God. I speak now in the name of Jesus and I speak peace. He said, don't come to my house. Just speak the word. Pastor, a word from you is enough. Jesus, a word from you, the word is enough. And then Jesus told the disciples, whoa, I've not seen any faith like this. And when Jesus heard it, verse 10, he marveled and said to them that followed him, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. What, what has the man done? He actually came to ask Jesus to come. That's belief. Jesus was coming. He said, no, just speak the word. I know your word. This man's action constituted his faith. So, and look at verse 13. It said that, and Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. See, your belief is what determined it. And the servant, and the servant was healed in that same, self-same hour. It's the, it's the guy's faith. The guy's belief. He said, your belief. As you have believed, so shall it be for you. Because he demonstrated it by speaking. The faith came alive and he delivered. Your faith will deliver. I see your faith delivering in the name of Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 9 verse 2, and uh, talking about some, um, Matthew 9 2, and behold, they brought to him a, a, a man sick of the palsy, laying on the bed, and Jesus seeing their faith. What, what is in your heart cannot be seen, but your actions can be seen. So Jesus saw some moves. Jesus saw their faith. Jesus seen their faith. He said, son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven. He saw the faith. And then when he read down, the man was healed. Ma I'm talking about Matthew chapter 9. He saw the faith, the man was healed. Matthew chapter 9 again, verse 22. Jesus, I like that one. That is a good one. Matthew 9, 22. Jesus said to the woman, daughter, be of good cheer, for thy faith has made you. But Jesus turned about... Oh, I, 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 I turned him about and and uh, and Jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good, good good comfort thy faith has made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour who made her whole who made her whole Jesus said your faith when you read the text very carefully you see that, the, that this woman took some actions he said if I can touch him she pushed herself. She got up. Step out in faith. There's no way Peter would have walked on the water, Matthew chapter 14, if he hadn't stepped out on faith. You are too much afraid. That's why you are not seeing the manifestation of God's glory. Look for a word from God. A word that you know this is from God is hitting your spirit. Because if you step out without a word from God, you are in trouble. Because that's presumption. That's presumption. And that's not faith. Sometimes people are taking steps of pre presumptuous steps and they are assuming his faith. Any step you take without a direct word, you didn't receive a word in your spirit from God. We are convinced based on the word. You believe the word in your heart and then that provoked a step. If it doesn't come from there, it is not faith. It is fake. It's not faith. Because if it's faith, it's based on God's word which has entered your heart. If the word hasn't entered your heart, so somebody took a step and the person said, I believe God said I should do it and I did it and he did it and God resolved. So you said the person one said he did it. So me too, okay, I'm going to do it. Have you received the word in your heart? If you haven't received it in your heart, forget it. Forget it. <laughs> Anything in Christianity rises and falls on faith. You are fasting without faith. Oh, oh. You are praying without faith. No, it is your faith that gives your prayer its 
uh, impetus. Well, let me just move on from there because there's quite a few to share as I get ready to run out. Verse, uh, verse 29, Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. In fact, verse 28 says that, And when he came to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe you that I am able to do this. Jesus said, All I need from you, just believe. If you can believe, the believing is a game changer. It's a game changer. Believe you are, you are following me to do something for you. But what I don't know is, do you believe in your heart? This giving you are doing, do you believe in your heart? That's why people on the internet or anywhere can easily discourage you and talk. And they, they talk you out. Because the thing has not taken root in your heart. When something takes root in your heart, going to church and being a believer, even what has been happening in our time that, oh, uh, uh, people use Christianity to, to kill people and all that. If you're a proper Christian, sometimes if you listen to this, it can make you think, mm -mm -mm. but if you're a proper Christian, the thing is your strength is not coming from your mind. It's coming from your heart. And so what you know from God's word is empowered, is supply, being supplied from your heart. All right, so from your inner man, that's where your strength comes from. He said, may the Lord strengthen you into your inner man. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, into your inner man. So it's your inner man. And so when you are a true Christian, your faith is hinged. The other time someone said something to me. I was doing a question and answer with a few people. And then somebody asked that sometimes when you go through challenges, what do you do in order not to give up? I said, if you are really connected to God, sometimes you want to give up, but you can't give up. It's not even, you can't give up. It's hard. If you're a genuine Christian, listen, it is hard to give up when you're a genuine Christian. It is hard to give up. The people who say, oh, I'm no more, I'm not interested. You are not a proper Christian, but potentially. <laughs> you know, unless you embrace false, do maybe you are a Christian, but you started embracing false doctrine. Once you embrace false doctrine, philosophy, ideology, you are on your way out. You are on your way out. You can't stay a Christian in false doctrine because false doctrine is wrong belief. Wrong believing means the wrong destiny and wrong results. All right. So Jesus said, do you believe that I can do this? And they, they said, yes, Lord. Then Jesus said, oh, that's all. If you really believe that you have taken this action, because the action you are taking, I just want to make sure there's belief behind it. So the action you are taking, Jesus said, if you believe, if you are taking this action, following me into the house, and you are believing, and you are taking this action because you believed, then Jesus turned and said that, be it, verse 29, be it unto you, be it unto, Jesus taught your eyes saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. So your faith is that determines the results. Your faith is determining the outcome of your marriage. Your, 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 you are how old? You are a lady, you are how old? And so you are worried you will be married. Drop it! Just, just walk with God. Stay on his word. You are afraid you will not get birth. I just saw, I didn't even watch it because a lot of things I don't get time to watch. But someone sent me a clip. I didn't watch it. But the, I saw the YouTube title. It says that, uh, I think, um, a woman who has been married for 46 years, I think 50, uh, 60 something year old woman has given birth. 46 years of marriage, waited, waited, finally has got, got a child. I mean, happening nowadays, why can't your own happen? Don't give up too quickly. Don't give up. Just keep believing. Believe to the end. Believe to the end. Believe to the <laughs> Believe to the end. I've dropped my spectacles. Praise God. Believe to the end. Believe. Bible says that he that endures to the end, the same <laughs> shall be saved. I'm getting very excited. Look, my time is up. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so Jesus, I saw that in the scriptures, all those who received miracles from Jesus had living faith. They had action faith. They took a step, practically most of them. They took a step and Jesus healed. In John chapter 4, verse 50, the man came to Jesus. Jesus touched, uh, Jesus said that, go your way, your son lives. And my man believed and went and he saw the miracle. The Bible said the son was healed because he went. But Jesus said, go. And he, he believed and went. So you see, he didn't believe and stayed. He believed and went. And the child was healed. I'm talking about Fide Viva, living faith. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24, he says that Jesus, Jesus said, have faith in God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if you have faith like a man, if you have faith, uh, he said, whoever shall say to this mountain, be thou moved and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes in his heart that whatever he says shall come to us. He shall have whatever he says, right? So he said, when you pray, believe that the things you say shall have them, and you shall have what you shall have your desire. You shall have them. So it's believing and saying. So but Jesus started by saying, have faith in God. Faith is equals to believing and acting. 
believing and acting. Because if there's no action, corresponding action to your faith, the faith is not alive. The faith is dead. Because I read from James, he said, faith without works is dead. So faith must have corresponding action. Jesus told Peter, Luke 22 verse 32, that Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I pray for you that your faith will not fail. It's so important that faith does not fail. So faith can fail when there's no action to the belief. Faith can fail. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. Fight. Fight to stay in faith. Keep hearing the word. The Satan will be trying to throw all kinds of blows. All his strength is the things that he will make you see or hear. But that is not a defining factor. That's not determinative. What is determin- What determines the outcome of the battle or the outcome of the situation is your faith. It's your faith that gets God involved in the case. Because your case is different if God is involved. In, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, sorry, chapter 15, I'm sorry, Matthew 15, 28, 26, the woman said to Jesus, that even the dogs, the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall under the table. And Jesus said, whoa, woman, great is your faith. Verse 28, Jesus said, great is your faith, be it unto you. Matthew chapter 15, let me read that. Woman, great is your faith. Woman, you can use your faith to receive your miracle for that child. Use your faith to receive your miracle for that child. Mom, use your faith. Verse 28, it says that, And Jesus answered and said, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. The way, what you want, your faith is already in place, so it will happen for you. Be it on, Jesus said this. Initially, Jesus said, I'm not going to do, initially, Jesus said, I'm not going to do a miracle for you. Because it's not yet that. But the woman said, you have to. The dogs were even in the ground. Jesus said, oh woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you as you have willed. Not what I said, but you willed. It may happen for you. Your faith is a game changer. It changes everything. In Mark chapter 10, there was a man called Blind, blind Bartimaeus from verse 46 downwards. He was sitting by the roadside begging. And he saw, he heard that Jesus was passing. He started shouting, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on him on me. And people around him said, shut up. He didn't shut up. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He kept shouting. He kept screaming. And Jesus stopped. Jesus said, bring him to me. And then when the man came, Jesus said, what do you want? He said, that I might have myself. And Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. Verse 52. Mark chapter 10, verse 52. Be it unto you according to your faith. And he received his testimony. Why do you think you will not receive your testimony? You will receive your testimony in the name of Jesus. Finally, in the, in the book of Hebrews, so much happened in Hebrews. Bible says that, Hebrews chapter 11, I'm sorry. Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. I saw, watch this, the whole, the chapter dedicated to faith in the whole Bible is Hebrews. It's talk, it just, it's a catalog of people who got results by faith. So Hebrews chapter um, 11, verse 3, it says, by faith, we understand that the world's were, the world with the worlds were framed by the word of God. Okay. So that what is seen did not is not a result of what is visible. What we are seeing came from what was not seen. Then verse 4, it says that for by faith the elders obtained a good report. By faith. Now watch this what he said. Then he started he started enumerating or enlisting the faith works. He says, by faith, watch this verse 5. He said, by faith. Sorry, verse verse 5, yeah. By faith, Abel offered. You see, did you watch it? The, it was action. It's full of action faith that brought the re- good report. Good report is a function of action faith. Good report is a function of living faith. Good report is a function of fide viva. If you want your faith to work, you must have, give works to your faith. Don't be sitting there saying, I'm sick. And always, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm dying, I'm dying. You will die. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. Stop saying that. Start saying what God is saying. Stop saying what God is saying and start put it where you can. Put some actions to your, add actions to what you believe. Add actions and make it your faith. Bible said, by faith, Abel offered. Chapter, uh, chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. By faith, Abel offered, verse 6. Um, no, sorry, by, verse 4. Ve- verse 4, by faith, Abel, uh, by, verse 2 is by faith, they obtain, uh, the eldest obtain a good report. I think it's just good to just go there, please. Pardon me. Uh, forgive me for 
um, uh, yeah, for by it the elders obtain a good report. And then verse five says that by uh, by faith, verse four says by faith Abel offered. Verse five by faith Enoch pleased God. Five, five, verse five and six, okay, because he pleased God. All right, so by faith Enoch pleased God. Verse verse seven by faith Noah moved. So. I want you to check the action. They have faith by resulted in action. By faith, Noah moved. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed. Verse 9, by faith, Abraham, uh, verse, verse 8 said, by faith, Abraham obeyed. Abraham again, by faith, he dwelt. Verse, eight, verse 10, by faith, Abraham waited. So Abraham obeyed. 8, he dwelt. 9, he waited. Verse 10, verse 11, Sarah herself received strength to conceive when she was past age. So you see, actions action so they had faith and they act it was an action faith when you read um verse um so say verse verse 17 by faith abraham offered up isaac he offered up he did something he offered up by faith he concluded so he offered up verse 19 concluding verse 17 offered up verse 19 concluding that god was able so he this is what he this mindset was faith based and it produced an action no wonder he's a father he alone he moved and he obeyed he dwelt he uh, so he waited he offered up he concluded look at the number of things he did him and moses were amazing people and then verse 20 says that by faith isaac blessed verse 21 by faith jacob blessed 20 verse 22 by faith uh, uh, 21 is uh, Isaac blessed Jacob blessed 22 uh, 21 21 Jacob blessed 22 by faith Joseph spoke about the departure of the people from Egypt he spoke by faith that's verse 20 verse 23 by faith the parents of Moses hit the boy they did it. That action was an action of faith, not fearing the king's wrath. By faith, Moses himself, hallelujah, I like that. Moses himself, he refused when he come, came of age. He, when he was a child, he didn't know what he was doing. But when he came of age, he re, by faith, he refused. Verse 24, by faith, Moses refused. Verse 25, by faith, Moses chose affliction of the people of God. Verse 26, by faith, Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ better than the pleasures of Egypt. By And then verse 20, 26, again, he, not just he esteemed, he also looked forward to the reward. He looked to the reward. He looked to the reward. So Moses looked to the reward. Can you imagine? So by faith, 24, he, uh, he refused. 25, by faith, he chose. 26, by faith, he esteemed. 27, by faith, he looked forward to the reward. 28, by faith, Bible said that by faith, the, uh, 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 the you know, verse 27, actually, he, he took the Passover, all right? So verse 27, by, by faith, Moses kept the Passover by faith. Can you see the action there? Verse 29. 28 by faith they crossed the Red Sea. Verse 29 by uh, verse uh, the, the, the 28 they crossed the Red Sea. Verse 29 the the walls of Jericho came down by faith. Verse verse 30 by faith. Thank you Jesus. By by faith 31 says that Rahab Rahab did not perish. Let me read it. Thank you Lord. Verse verse 30 by faith the walls of Jericho came down. Verse um so verse 28 Moses kept the Passover. Verse 29, the, the world through the world Red Sea. Verse 30, the walls of Jericho came down when they marched around it. Verse 31, Rahab did not perish. I like that bit. By faith, the harlot Rahab, Bible says his, her works, she was a harlot. By faith, um, the harlot Rahab perished not. Why didn't he perish? Because he believed uh, 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 with them that believe why when she received so by faith Rahab received the people that's why she didn't perish what are you doing by faith that must uh, which makes you expect that kind of results that the Bible people and some of us by faith are receiving you do ministry by faith you build your church by faith you build your family by faith you do it by faith and then he says that time will not permit me to talk about Gideon to talk about Barak, to talk about Samson, to talk about Jephthah, to talk about David, to talk about Samuel, to talk about the prophets who by faith subdued kingdoms. I can't go on. They did so, so much work. So the, by, by faith, let me take it from the New King James Version. My Bible, I finished. My time is up. My time is up. But <laughs> look at verse 32. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says that 
And what more? Time will not permit me to talk about, I said, to talk about Gideon, to talk about Barak, to talk about Samson, to talk about Jephthah, to talk about David, to talk about Samuel, to talk about the prophets. Verse 33 says that, who by faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women, verse 35, women received their dead raised raised to life others were tortured not by faith they were tortured not accepting deliverance it's only faith that can do that they were tortured and they didn't accept deliverance by faith they didn't accept deliverance tortured not accept deliverance uh, uh, not accept deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection still others were try uh, others had trials of mockings and scourgings yes and of chains and of imprisonment they were all, uh, they were stoned, were, s- s- uh, they were slain with the sword. They were, uh, uh, sorry, they wandered, slain with the sword. One of the uh, scriptures, uh, they, said, they, saw us, they were cut into two like with their soul. But they still said, I, I won't give up by faith. What are you doing by faith? This hall of faith, it's only describing actions. Because it's, that's faith. Faith is only known by actions. How do you make your faith work for you? Is by putting action to your faith. Give it life. Because when you put action to your faith, you give your faith life. Faith becomes living. I see from today, I see you walking in a living faith. I see you walking with act in action faith. Don't listen to the, the co- complaints and the criticism of the world. They don't understand. They won't get it. Because the word came to your heart. It's not their heart. And so the word in your heart, the faith in your heart, or the belief in your heart is what you are putting to action. It's not somebody's heart that is determining your, your belief or your actions. It's your own heart. So that's why you have to keep the word coming, coming in. Faith comes by hearing Romans chapter 10, verse um, 17. How can they, how shall they call on him on whom they have not heard? Or whom they have not believed? So even to be saved, you have to believe. And it's a faith comes by hearing. You have to hear so you can believe. That's why if I were you, whatever I'm believing God for, I will, this is the time I will listen to more preaching. I will listen to more, I will cut down on entertainment and start exercising my faith, exercising myself unto godliness because your faith will deliver and the, the results will be uh, uh, usually very colorful. In Jesus' name, amen. I see your faith delivered. Jesus' name. God bless you so much. Thank you for listening. Now, I don't want to end without giving somebody the opportunity to say, Jesus come into my heart. If that's your desire, you want Jesus to come into your heart. Please say this with this way sometimes. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you. But I believe you are the Son of God and you died on the cross to save me from my sins. From today, I choose to put all my faith in you. I believe in you and your the work of the cross for my redemption. Please forgive me for my sins because I repent and I turn away from my sins. Wash me with your blood and make me a brand new person from the inside. Thank you for dying to save me. Thank you for giving me the privilege to exercise my faith in you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I thank you for my brother and my sister who have put their faith in you. I pray that you will help them the way you've helped some of us to walk with you and stay with you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said the prayer genuinely from your heart, guess what? You are uh, uh, born again. You are a Christian. A believer. To grow in your faith, you need to keep receiving the word of God and be part of a healthy Christian community who believe fundamentally in what the Bible says and they, they believe in the word of God and they are growing. You grow and make a difference. You can visit us in any of our services. In the, uh, we have church services in the various places on the screen. We would love to see you in the name of Jesus. God bless you so much. Now, the rest of you, thank you so much for giving me the privilege to share God's word. My prayer is that your faith is coming alive. Your faith is going to work from today. You are going to put your faith to work by, by working it. You are going to work your faith by giving it works. You are going to give your faith feet. Your faith feet, feet, feet. You are going to give it feet to walk, to walk, to work. You are going to give it life by putting it to action and not just believing in your heart and not doing anything. Doing, 
put it into action, people will see that. Why are you doing this? You don't have to explain everything to unbelievers. Just keep doing it. They will see the results. Then the results, the results will explain what you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, spend my time and I pray that the word of God will bring faith in you. Your faith is working in Jesus' name. Please, let's take the benediction. And now unto him who by his power created the heavens and the earth, and to Jesus Christ our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our teacher, we ascribe all honor, praise, dominion, power, majesty, glory, thanksgiving, wisdom, even now and forevermore. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May he, may he, may he bless you. May he cause his face to shine on you and give you peace. I bless your drink and I bless your food. I bless your going out and I bless your coming in. No evil comes near you. You are covered. You are blessed. No satanic programming against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you shall be condemned in judgment. May God give you an upper hand over your enemies. All the ill wishes against you, the negative pronouncements will fail. I command healing over your body. I speak miracle bless, miracle manis, miracle marriages, miracle babies, miracle, miracle jobs, miracle promotions, miracle uh, admissions, miracle educational ex, 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 educational progress, miracle opportunities all around you, favors all around you. I speak peace in your house. I curse that, that attack on your mind, your, your mind to leave, alone, leave you alone. I curse that sickness to leave your body. I curse that confusion in your family to go. And I speak peace. I speak peace. Don't cry. Somebody has been crying. Excuse me, for I've been crying for the past few days, but I pray that God will wipe your tears and give you laughter instead, as instead as you step out in faith based on his word. God bless you in Jesus' name. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to speak the word of God to you. I look forward to the next session. It's going to be amazing. I pray that the next time we meet, you have testimonies of faith. By faith, the elders obtain a good report. Remember. We walk by faith and not by sight. This year, Caris Ministries is our year of faith, and we walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith, for whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Subspecies itinatus. In other words, looking at things from the eternal perspective. Subspecies, eternatus, eternatus, eternity, in the light of eternity. So, if you want to walk holy and live a holy life, perfect holiness, then you have to subspecies, eternatus. See our minds on eternity, and we're looking for eternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we're looking for eternity, and we're living for eternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we call subspecies. Subspecies, I turn a turtle. This is what we call subspecies. Subspecies, I turn a turtle. Subspecies, I turn a turtle. I turn a turtle. I turn a turtle. Subspecies, I turn a turtle. I turn a turtle. Living for eternity. Cause we're living for eternity. Looking for eternity. Subspecies, I turn a turtle. See our minds on eternity. And we're looking for eternity, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we're looking for eternity, and we're living for eternity, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we call subspecies, I, subspecies, I, turtles. This is what we call subspecies, I, subspecies, I, turtles. Subspecies, I, I, turtles. I, turn a I turn a turtle, subspecies. I turn a turtle, I turn a, I turn a turtle. Living for eternity, cause we're living for eternity. Looking for eternity, subspecies. I turn a turtle.
We are so thankful for you, our Caris members, and anyone else tuning in. We hope you were blessed by today's message. We want to thank you for your prayers and giving in this time. To everyone who has been faithful with their tithes and offering, we thank you for partnering with us in spreading the gospel. For those of you who wish to give, this can be done online by going to caris.org forward slash giving or via bank transfer using the account details on the screen. During this time, why not browse through our YouTube channel for more teachings and also make sure you subscribe and click on the notification icon to be notified of any new message. We look forward to fellowshipping with you again. God bless you.